is to work with a Southern Poverty Law Firm, yeah. which is as anti-Christian as you can possibly get. And their job is to persecute and prosecute Christians. That's why Obama has hired them, folks. See, that's the reality. And sometimes what happens, the reality, it kind of sneaks up on people because, you know, this is supposed to be America. And, folks, it's happening to us what's, what's so much of the rest of the world have had to tolerate for years and years. It's here now! <coughs> it is here now. So... Using sin issues such as abortion, sodomy, bestiality, pedophilia, these are the popular sins embraced by the apostate church, such as the United Church of the Antichrist, which Obama attended. And so, on one side, you have the anarchist, Bill Ayers. By the way, Bill Ayers was there in Chicago instigating uh, what was going on there. George Soros, who's, who's funding all of that. And here you have them, and, and these young people, if you've seen them out there, they're mindless. They're screaming, they're pushing, they're shoving uh, heathen. Uh, and, and they're yelling and they're screaming out, free speech, free speech, but only free speech for them. Uh, and again, this is exactly what Isaiah, the prophet said in Isaiah chapter 32, verses 1 through 8, that in the later days, just before the turn of the Lord, that the vile person, the vile person would practice hypocrisy. But then he goes on to say the liberal, the liberal will be called a vile person. The liberal will be called a vile person. Folks, uh, revile means to be repulsed, repulsive to God. And that is here today in spades. We're living it. We are in the great apostasy. This is, but this is our time now. Amen. This is our time to stand up and run to this battle. you got two options. You either stand up, run to the battle, or pretend like you don't know what's happening. And if you wanted to stay lethargic, you wanted to stay out of the, out of the fight, you know, just like, well, hey, you know what? This is my life, and uh, I'll give God, if I have any extra time, I'll give it to him. Well, guess what? Uh, you know, God is going to reward you. You will reap what you sow. The time will come. Remember this. God owes you nothing. You owe him everything. He owes you nothing, folks. Here, here's what he tells you. To put him first in everything. This is what God says, to put him first in everything. Now, here's what that means. To put him first in everything. You see? Now, you don't have to believe that if you don't want to. You know, hey, listen, you've got the right to believe whatever you want, right? I mean, that's what I tell these people out there, this Black Lives Matter now. You've got the right to be as stupid as you want. Don't let anybody tell you that you don't have the right to be stupid. You continue. Because any time, any time you find yourself at odds, and any time you're in an argument with God, you're going to lose that one, right? Yeah. <laughs> now, on the other side, you have the... On one side you have the anarchist, on the other side the monarchist. And those are better known as the establishment. And uh, that's headed up by Steve Lafayette, what is called the Main Street Partnership. Now, this is a left of center, fictitious cartel whose main goal is to stay in power by any and all means. That's, what, that's the whole idea, stay in power, stay in power. These are the people that give you all of those empty promises that we see out there today. They present themselves as moderate Republicans, yet they want to keep abortion legal. They say sodomy and Obamacare is the law. Get used to it and accept it. And I, I was right there uh, when Dave Joyce, he was no more than from here to that pole away from me, came right out and said, Obamacare is the law. Get used to it. Boy, I'm going to tell you, the response he got from the people there, all of a sudden, he wanted to get out of there in a hurry. And um, the other main call of these people there, the monarchists, is to, uh, we're going to stop the Tea Party. We're going to stop the Tea Party. The only bit of conservatism left in the Republican Party is the Tea Party. That's right. 
So if you go over to Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 1, if you listen very carefully, Isaiah, you'll see uh, this mindset of the monarchist or the establishment played out here. Now the vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, to them, Ahaz and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up the children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know my people, and doth not consider. Uh, a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken of the Lord, and they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger, and they are gone away backward. Why should you be stricken any more? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart is faint. Mm. Folks, that's what's wrong with America today. Yep. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it but wounds and bruises and petrifying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate, your cities are burned with fire, and your land, strangers devour it in your presence, and it is desolate as it's overthrown by strangers. Every day, every day they bring more and more illegal aliens into our country. More and more cities are taken over by Islam. You have more and more Sharia courts started. The vast majority of people don't know it. Why? They depend on NBC, ABC, and CBS to tell them what's going on. They depend on these people in Washington, D.C. that are totally out of touch <coughs> with the people out here. They don't understand. Why are people so angry? What's their problem? Why don't, why don't they like being lied to? You know, they don't understand, folks. The Republican leadership, if you will, establishment, they are so out of touch with grassroots. You know? They're clueless. And the daughter of Zion has left us a cottage in the vineyard and a lodge in the garden of cucumbers is a besieged city. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Do you understand? Listen. They keep telling you, in all of the high schools, yesterday I went into uh, Giant Eagle and, uh, to pick up some, some laundry. <coughs> and here they had this big display of Girl Scout cookies. Yeah, you had all these Girl Scouts, uh, what are they called, Den Mothers, and these Girl Scouts with a big table full of cookies. Not one person was walking up. Not one person. You know why? Because the Girl Scouts have been so associated with Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. And I was watching them as they walked by, as people would walk by and they would look and they would turn their head the other way. Good. Why? Planned Parenthood, what does it represent? Everything that is unclean. Again, hear the word of the Lord, rulers of Sodom, give ears into the law our God, you people of Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodomy is a sin. Sodomy, according to Almighty God, who will judge that? Sodomy is a vile sin. It's an abomination in the sight. See, and it doesn't matter what public opinion polls say. You see, at, at the end of the day, it's God who's judging these. And God never loses an argument, folks. <laughs> To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat fed beasts. I delight not, I delight not in the blood of your bullocks or lambs or of he goats. When you come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations, incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and the Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with it. Iniquity, even the solemn meetings. Why? Because they're all phony. They're all frivolous, just like 
today here. On one hand, John Kasich's out there saying how well, he's, he's a good Christian man. On the other side, he said, I don't consult my Bible. I don't to decide how I should govern. What does the Word of God say? Consult your Bible to decide how to govern. Right? <laughs> your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me, and I am weary to bear them. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yes, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wet, wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings. From before mine eyes, cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing, listen, it's going to happen to every single person you know. The time is coming when the only thing that's going to matter to them is their personal standing with the Lord Jesus. That will happen. That will happen. So you can, you can wish and hope and you can believe whatever you want to believe, but that's going to happen. And then all the other stuff that seems so much matters so much to you won't matter. The only thing will matter is whether or not you're going to heaven or hell. That's all. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat of the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with a sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. How is the faithful city become a harlot? It was full of judgment. Righteousness lies in it, but now murderers! The silver has become dross, thy wine mixed with water. Thy princes, meaning legislators, are rebellious. And companions of thieves, everyone loveth gifts, meaning bribes. Kind of like our, it's like our political system today, like our judicial system. And followeth after rewards, the judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them. Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries, and avenge me of mine enemies, and I will turn my hand upon thee, and purely purge away the dross, and take away all thy tin. And I will restore the judges at the first, and thy counselors as a beginning afterwards. Thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, and the faithful city shall be redeemed with judgment and converts with righteousness, and the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together. And they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed, for they shall be ashamed of the oaks which they have desired, and you shall be confounded for the gardens that you have chosen. For you shall be as an oak whose leaf fadeth, and the garden hath no water. And as the strong shall be a toe, and the maker of it is a spark, and they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. <coughs> In other words, God is saying, look, repent or perish. Repent or perish. Amen. Well, then, then we come mm -hmm. down to what we have today. We have the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, the, the good are caught right between the bad and the ugly. Now they range from those that are very biblically literate to those that are very biblically literate. And this is what causes such division in a church. I just heard a, a pastor who's on Fox News uh, as a contributor who's supposed to be a Baptist, and here's what he said. He said, even though Donald Trump uh, doesn't make for a very good Christian, He'd be a great president. In other words, he's saying that he's a horrible Christian, but he's a great he'd be a great president. Now here's a guy that's supposed to understand God's word of the Bible. Here's a guy that's on the radio teaching the Bible. Now I want to, I want you to see here's what the Bible says. This is this is I didn't write one word of this. And this is where some people who, who get angry with me for preaching this. The folks. Okay. Uh, Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 15. 
Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose, one from among the brethren, that thou shalt set king over thee, <coughs> mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. He's telling you that the people, see, people are going to say, well, well, God has, he has raised up Nebuchadnezzar, he's raised up Manasseh. See, God did that. God did that, but guess what? You are not God. You see? See, God does it this way. He says, here, I'll tell you what to do, and you do what I tell you. See, but we don't tell God what to do, right? Amen. See, that's the way it works. Okay. I'm going to close this out and then finish here. We've been coming to you this morning from Doers of the Word Baptist Church. At 14781 Sperry Road in Newberry, Ohio, 44065. You can reach us by phone at 440-338-1367 or 440-338-1036. You're listening to us this morning on the Liberty Network. That's the Eagle 104.3. Again, that is the Liberty Works Radio Network, 104.3 FM in Tampa and Ocala. And you can hear this program replayed every Sunday from 2 a.m. 2 a.m. to 8 a.m., 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And until next week, we want to say good morning, God bless, and remember, always, always, King fighting the fight! Well, if we go back to Deuteronomy chapter 17, we read in verse 18, And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book, out of that which is before the priests and Levites. And it shall be with him that he shall read therein all the days of his life. Do you understand? We have the Bible. We're to read the Bible all the days of our life. Right. And we're to, you see, God says this is what you do. See, the only one that can say, do as I say and not as I do, is God. Right? Because we can't do the things that God does, right? He goes on to say, And it should be with him, and he shall read there all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of the law, and these statutes to do them. That his heart be lifted, not lifted up above his brother, and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, and his children are in the midst of Israel. And then, if you go over to 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 10 to 13. And again Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, are her any other? Are, are they all thy children? He said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And, and Samuel said unto him, To Jesse, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come tether. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and the withal of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brother. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. So you see, he chose amongst the people. Okay, We are to choose amongst, as Christians, we are to choose a Christian. Someone who we believe, who is active, and who is given proof of being a Christian. Right? Amen. Not someone that says, well... When asked, uh, have you ever asked God for forgiveness of your sins? This says, I've never done anything so wrong that I need forgiveness. <laughs> now let me explain to you again. The very first thing that one must do before one can receive salvation is to repent of their sin, to ask God for forgiveness, and then call upon the name of the Lord. Exactly. <coughs> so if he's never, never done that, then he is not a Christian, folks. Well, I want you to go over to Jeremiah chapter 30. And in Jeremiah chapter 30, 
verses 21 through 24. We read this. And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them. And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engages the, the heart to approach unto me, saith the Lord? And you shall be my people, and I will be your God. In other words, he's saying the nobles you have to pick, your leaders from among your people. How many are getting this message? Are, are you understand what he's telling you here? Okay. And you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth from forth with fury, a continual whirlwind, and it shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he hath done it, and until he hath performed the intents of his heart. In the later days you shall consider it. And then, if you go to Hosea, well, let's go over to Jeremiah chapter 27. While we're here, Jeremiah chapter 27. And uh, start with verse 6. Well, no, I'm going, yeah. Before I do that, let's go to Hosea. Let's go to Hosea chapter 8. Just one verse in Hosea chapter 8. Listen to what it says. They have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Of their silver and of their gold have they made the idols that they may be cut off. That means killed off. So what is he telling you? He's saying that they went ahead, and boy, I'm going to tell you, they got themselves in a whole lot of trouble, okay, because they ignored God's law. They didn't want godly people. They didn't want good people. And, and what do they say in Washington? You can never trust a man who you can't bribe. That's the mindset that they have. Then you go back to Jeremiah chapter 27, verse 6. And now have I be given all these lands into the hand. You see, this is what God has done. See, we are not God. God says, do as I tell you. We can't do the things that God does. Okay? We will do as, be as, as Christ-like as possible. But here's what he says. And I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and the beasts of the field have I given him also to serve him. And all the nations shall serve him, and his son and his son's son, until the very time of his, of his land come. And when many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. And it shall come to pass that the nations and the kingdoms will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon. The nation will I punish, saith the Lord, with a sword and with a famine, with thy pestilence, till I have consumed them by his hand. Therefore hearken not ye to your prophets, nor to your diviners, nor to your dreamers, nor to your enchanters, nor to your sorcerers, which seek speaking to you, saying, You shall not serve the king of Babylon. For they prophesy a lie unto you to remove you far from your land, and that I should deprive you, or that I should drive you out, and you should perish. But the nations that bring their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, those will I let remain, still in their own land, saith the Lord. And they shall kill it and dwell therein. I spake unto Zedekiah, king of Judah, according to all these words, saying, Bring your necks under the yoke of this king of Babylon, and serve him and his people, and live. Why will you die, though the people by the though and thy people by thou and thy people by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, as the Lord has spoken against the nation that will not serve the king of Babylon? Therefore hearken not unto the words of the prophets that speak unto you, saying, You shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie unto you. For I have not sent them, saith the Lord. Yet they prophesy a lie in my name, that I might drive you out, and that you might perish. Yes, the prophets that prophesied unto you. Also I spake to the priests and to all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, hearken not to the words of your prophets, 
that prophesy unto you, saying, Behold, the vessels of the Lord's house shall not shortly be brought again from Babylon, but they prophesy a lie unto you. <coughs> Hearken not unto them. Serve the king of Babylon and live. Wherefore should this city lay waste? But if thy be prophets, and if the word of the Lord be with them, let him <coughs> now make intercession to the Lord of hosts, that the vessel which are left in the house of the Lord and in the house of the king of Judah and Jerusalem go not to Babylon. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, concerning the pillars and concerning the seasons and concerning the bases, concerning the residue of the vessels remaining in the city, which Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon took not, when he carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, from Jerusalem to Babylon, and all the nobles of Judah and Jerusalem. Yes, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel concerning the vessels that remain in the house of the Lord, in the house of the king of Judah and Jerusalem, and they shall be carried to Babylon, and there shall be until that day that I visit them, saith the Lord. Then will I bring them up and restore them to the place well. That happened later, but guess what? God placed those people under Nebuchadnezzar as a punishment. As a punishment. Nebuchadnezzar was a he was a wicked man. He was a wicked man. And of course, uh, he learned a whole lot from God. You know, he learned that uh, the God that was in the fire was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All of a sudden, he said, everybody now is going to bow down to that God. He, was, he had kind of a quick belief. But one day later on, he stood out on his balcony, and he opened up his arms, and he looked out, and he said, all of this, all of this have I created. And it was good that he liked the, the lush green grass. For seven <laughs> years, he was eating it, you see. God said, no, wait a minute, excuse me, you created this, Nebuchadnezzar? How do you feel about grass? Grass fed beef. Does that look good to you? <laughs> you know what? You're going to have a new hairdo, old king. Mm -hmm. Your hair is going to look just like bird feathers. In fact, that's what it's going to be. Sure. And you're going to have claws like a bird. And you're going to walk around in all fours eating grass like an ox. Mm -hmm. Because you see, you're not God, Nebuchadnezzar. I'm God. You see? That's what a lot of people today think. They look around, and they don't see God looking at them. And the mind said, well, God, if I can't see him, he can't see me. It don't work that way. It don't work that way at all. Folks. And then I want to close with James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Now he's speaking actually to those that are professing to be the church today. From whence come wars and fightings among you? You see, that's what's happening today yeah. in America because of this, these campaigns. Yeah. People that are professing Christians are totally divided. From whence comes wars and fightings among you? Came they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? You lust and have not, you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight in your war. Yet you have not because you ask and not. You ask and receive not because you ask and miss, that you may consume it upon your own lust. You see here, it works this way, you see. We are to put God first. Amen. See, it's not supposed to see people don't this is a hard thing for people to understand. See, people's natural nature, this is why you see thousands and thousands come to these prosperity preachers like Joel Osteen, Rick Warren, why? Because they tell them, okay, the fact. What did Joel Osteen's wife say? She said this, It's not about God, it's about you. That's what she said. And do you know why she said it? Because she knew that's what the people wanted to hear. And so the people are out there, We're here, here's our money, tell us what God wants to do for us. Tell me that God wants to buy me a new Mercedes. Tell me that I want to move up down and move to it better, a nicer house. I'm here to find out what God wants to do for you. And they'll tickle your ears. So. 
You adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Listen, let's say it again. See, what, that's what this whole thing's about. When these people are saying, look, look, you got to separate your faith from your politics. Those, from Genesis to Revelation, every prophet, every priest, every pastor, every man and woman of God, their faith and their politics were inseparable. Their faith and their politics were inseparable. I ran into some of that when I went on to the, to the tea party when I took over. I immediately ran into some people there that wanted to give God 30 seconds. In fact, one of them actually said 30 seconds is enough. You adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us wants us to envy? But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Amen. Speak not evil of one, one of another. Brother, and he that speaketh evil of his brother and judge him. His brother speaketh evil of the law, and judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy. Who art thou that thou judgest enough? And I'm going to stop right there with that. But that is the state of our nation today. Amen? Amen. 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 I was telling you in the, in the message, uh, just recently, Assistant, this is from the United States Justice Foundation, Assistant Attorney General John Carlin announced that Barack Obama's Justice Department is creating a new extra constitutional position of Domestic Terrorism Council to track down and apprehend homegrown extremists. And Mr. Obama's new domestic terrorism czar will join forces with a Southern Poverty Law Firm to hunt down conservative Christians across America. There you go. That's happening. We picked into them when we were in uh, Alabama. Took the pictures off. They didn't like it at all. It was founded by a... They're, they're black. It's a black law firm. It was founded by a pedophile. Actually, they were Jewish people that started it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Morris Deeds. In fact, U.S. Air Force Academy, hostile to Christians, but funds witchcraft and Buddha. They took the money out of the church accounts, the Air Force Academy, and gave it to promote voodoo and witchcraft. 
See, you folks aren't supposed to know this stuff. So. Graphic dating survey given to high school students in Andover, Massachusetts. Crude questions on sexual experience, sodomy, criminal assault, and more. Outraged parents confront school officials. And yet they keep putting their, their children in public school. Do you have a copy of that? Oh, we can make you a copy, Grandma. Did you make a copy for Grandma? Okay. <coughs> words of praise. Everybody should have some words of praise today. Yes, Martha. Um, just yesterday, Vic and I were coming home from a uh, uh, shop getting groceries, and there were like three cars behind me, and we came up to a place where a road comes right into the road we were on, and I saw another car coming, and honest to goodness, they didn't stop. They just curved right into our lane. And thank God I was able to get over in the other lane, go around her, and right over the hill came two other cars. If they had been coming even three minutes sooner, it would have been a horrible crash there with about four cars. The cars, the other car, and these two coming over the hill. And so I said, thank you, Lord, thank you. <laughs> we often have unseen forces, angels, in our city on our behalf that we don't see. They're there. We can't see them. They're there. Yeah, John. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to thank the Lord for uh, the unseen protection he's given me. I've had more close calls than you can imagine in that job I have. Yeah. <laughs> Being a driver training for these young people, I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> that, could, uh, that could be an exciting day for you. Who else has words of praise? I'll second that. And there are many situations when I turn around and say, oh my gosh, when I'm driving especially, if I wouldn't have been careful and cautious, that car would have run right into me. And it happens. I think, that, I think we've all had those kind of experiences. The yes. Lord, yeah, again, we do have angels interceding on our behalf yeah. up right. here today. I thank the Lord for singles bringing me to church with the job not only taking me home. All right, well, praise the good Lord. That's what we're to do. Mm -hmm. We're to be doers of the word, not just hearers only, right? Amen. Remember what he says there in James 4, 17, for those that know to do good and do it not to them it's sin. And so, here, uh, the idea is to divide and conquer. And this we have to understand. This is why we have to be more unified than ever. Because one can chase a thousand and two ten thousand. And we see what the opposition is doing, the dividing along the lines. And that's what I'll be preaching on tonight, in both times, both messages tonight. And I'm going to be hitting on it all. Um, in fact, I think I might do something different than I normally do. I might go through this whole message again on Monday night's radio program with Pastor Larson. Okay, have that discussion because it really needs to get out there. Uh, the night before the election. Yeah. And what they're doing to Jan Porter. Oh, uh, They've really crossed the line what they're doing to her. And, uh, but we're not going to forget this. And it's the same thing what they did. Uh, what they're doing to Matt Lynch. Okay? Uh, they're, they're dropping. Uh, they, they're saved up all of that money. And Matt and, and, and Jan don't get one dime from the Republican Party. That's why I will not give a dime to the RNC anymore. Not a dime to them. Give it directly to your candidates. Because they want to, they want to stop the Tea Party. And so get ready for it. Uh, it's going to be a very, very hot summer, folks. Yeah. Because Obama's anarchist, his communists and Muslims are becoming to Cleveland. Okay. You see, what that is all about, don't you have to understand, get ready. He wants to try to be able to justify and use the media to declare martial law. Okay. And you're supposed to be very stupid. You're not supposed to understand what he's done. You're supposed to go to NBC, ABC, and CBS and rely upon them to tell you what you need to know. And if you do that, then stupid... What did uh, stupid is is stupid is stupid stupid is. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we all have things to be uh, thankful for. We should all have a word of praise for God is good. Yes. Um, yes. If, if, uh, if you've had a 
Roof over your head if you have food in your belly and shoes on your feet. Folks, you're doing good. A whole lot of people in this world don't have that. And if, you're, if you have a job, you're doing good. Amen. And so all of these things, you know, these are not because we deserve it. It's by God's grace. Because many, many people in this world don't have, don't have anything. Many people in this world will give their life just to own a Bible. And we have all kinds of them. Amen. Amen. So we have a lot to be thankful for. Nothing to be proud of because every single good characteristic that we have, every bit of merit, isn't by our own doing. It's by the grace of God. Amen. We couldn't pick our parents. We couldn't pick our gender. We couldn't pick when or where we were born. All of that came by God. Amen. Amen. That's right. So that's what we have to be thankful for. You ready, Brian? We recorded this one, don't forget. We're, we're the best team.
Get on out of here. Get out there and give them heaven. <coughs> Don't forget those gospel tracts that belong in somebody's hand. Not on that table. One set right by out. Also, folks, there's uh, there's cruise material out there, and uh, 